Hello everyone, seeing as we're racing the 1976 version of the Johannesburg circuit today, I'd like to give you a quick heads up in terms of the historical context. See, this track was used, prominently used, during the South African apartheid regime. And despite that, Grand Prix events would be held there regularly until the mid-1980s. Sports washing is not a new phenomenon, nor is it a new phenomenon in the world of Grand Prix racing. Just wanted to point that out for a second. So seeing as we're an organization that doesn't just want to blatantly ignore such contexts, fuck apartheid, fuck racism, love racing. That's it. Thank you. It's time for round four of the WMSC3 World Tour 2022. This week, we're going back in time to visit the 1976 Johannesburg circuit. But before we introduce this unique challenge on the World Tour schedule, let's take a quick look at the WMSC3 World Tour news. Adrian Friedrich has surprisingly announced a retirement, or sabbatical, from online sim racing. To celebrate what would turn out to be his final race of the season, he painted a special livery referencing some of his personal favorite achievements in sim racing, as well as honoring the late Dale Earnhardt. Johannesburg sees Lorenzo Turi seven points ahead of Daniel Bentenreader in the championship fight. We've had a little chat with Michael Kozbau, the Costec team principal, regarding the title hunt. Wenn ich mir die Performance von Daniel Bentenrieder so anschaue und wenn ich mir anschaue, dass er sich ja auch wirklich äh, extrem reinhängt, wenn ich Max sehe, der wieder aufblüht, der ja auch schon in höheren Klassen gefahren ist und da dann seine Probleme hatte, weil er mit vielleicht auch dem Druck nicht klar kam, äh, und wenn ich Philipp Fekeler sehe, der dann wirklich nah dran ist an seinen Teamkollegen und der nächstes Jahr bei uns sehr wahrscheinlich in einer etwas höheren Nachwuchsklasse fährt, dann sind das sehr positive Signale und dann ist das genau der kostek auftrag den wir hier auch erfüllen. Ich glaube, dass äh, die Pace bei Daniel Bentenrieder nie das Problem war. Wir ähm, haben immer gute Pace von ihm gesehen. Die Frage ist, ähm, wie sich das Verhältnis von Pace und dem, was er über eine Renndistanz umsetzen kann. Wenn die stimmt, kann er natürlich jeden Fahrer vor Probleme stellen. Er ist jetzt gerade auch nicht schlecht ausgerüstet, was jetzt äh, die Technik äh, angeht. Und von dem her hoffen wir natürlich, dass er das kann. Aber vor allem soll er, und da muss man den Namen ja mal erwähnen, Lorenzo Turi, der definitiv aus meiner Sicht einer der stärksten Fahrer ist in diesem Feld und das auch so konsequent durchzieht und sehr viel Erfahrung hat. Wenn er äh, Lorenzo Turi gefährden kann, dann kann er natürlich auch äh, eine große äh, Rolle spielen, dann nächstes Jahr beispielsweise auch in der WMSC. Seeing as both are quite successful at the moment, and rumors regarding both Benton Reader and Turi for the World Monoposto Sim Racing Championship 2023 have been bubbling up in the paddock. What does Cosmo have to say about this? I glaube, dass uh, sein langjähriger Freund und Förderer Johannes Kreulich, der ja auch der Teamchef von Peter Julia wohl sein wird nächstes Jahr in der WMSC, dass er ihm ähm, schon ein Cockpit auf jeden Fall geben wird, aber die Frage ist ja, wie ist der Weg dahin? Und wenn man wenn man sich Lorenzo Turi natürlich anschaut, ein Italiener, der großes Potenzial zeigt, der eine riesige Erfahrung wohl in R Faktor 1 eben hat, der hier ankommt und wirklich sehr professionell das Ganze durchzieht, auch sehr reflektiv ist, sage ich jetzt mal, von seinen Äußerungen, die er macht nach den Rennen, dann muss das natürlich für die Torino Car Group interessant sein und Und Max, der ja nächstes Jahr wohl der Cesario Teamchef sein wird, ist durchaus natürlich angetan und hätte natürlich im letzten Rennen gerne ähm, in Buenos Aires das Battle gehabt. Ähm, äh, zum Ende hin mit den frischen Reifen hat er nicht mehr bekommen und ich glaube, dass er da schon ein Auge drauf geworfen hat und dass Lorenzo Turi natürlich die Entdeckung der WMSC3 World Tour ist, da brauchen wir glaube ich nicht länger drüber reden, weil er hat einfach eine super Leistung gezeigt. Considering that the WMSC is going to be run in R-Factor 2 instead of Automobilista 1. Let's see if Benton Reader and Turi can take their pace from the Reza Sim to the acclaimed but often criticized Studio 397 title. And to round out the interesting stories for this week's event, we actually have somewhat of a sim racing novice joining us for the Johannesburg event. This is, yeah, terrifyingly my first dive into it. I, for years, 
wanted to. For years, I never had the hardware. I always just was a console gamer growing up. We never had a very good PC. We had NASCAR Racing 2003 in our house, but no wheel to play it with. So we were kind of very close to having a, a sim in the house that I could play, but we, we didn't. And then, yeah, I, I had a few years where I wasn't kind of as into motorsport that coincided, funnily enough, with F1 leaving free to air. So I didn't have access to it. So my kind of general motorsports interest and gaming interest kind of died down. And then around 2018, I got back into racing, decided, you know what? I We had like a PlayStation one wheel. I remember it being fun. I'm going to get one back. So I did. And that was mainly just to play with like the PS4 initially. And then since then, my computer's become passable to play games. So then I got Automobilista, R Factor 2. I finally picked up on NASCAR Racing 2003 after like a near 20 year wait. Um, and now this race is going to be my first competitive sim race. Uh, so yeah, that my background is, is just kind of a long precursor to this moment. I think it's long overdue. I suppose you could. I know. I, yeah, I suppose you could actually. I, I mean, I that. Yeah, to be fair, I maybe that's. I know other people argue about whether that is sim racing or not because it's a console only and because of its that because of the sort of game it is. And um, but yeah, no. To be fair, I, you could argue that I've got some pedigree. I've done like on obviously the online races and the rank races and that, and that was really enjoyable. And and you know that was the most consistent sort of racing I did competitively online with a wheel with you know that's my nearest frame of reference for sure but in terms of like a specific joining a specific league race um yeah this is this is a unique experience in that sense i would like to think on on raw pace I, i'm definitely not going to be at the back i think I'm, I'm, i can hopefully be in in the midfield uh, on pace alone having kind of lapped the circuit and seeing where you know my times are compared to expected pole time i don't think i'm way off how it goes in the race might be completely different because you know it, yeah, having raced you know like some my own other frame of reference being gt sport it depends on who you're racing against and i know in the league there's a lot of guys who've done this before and you know will try their best to to go wheel to wheel without incident but you know then again sometimes things get in the way and there are accidents so for me i'm definitely not going to be too aggressive i want to i want to be able to have some moves i don't want to be kind of a shrinking violet and just sink to the back in a race situation but at the same time i appreciate there are guys fighting for you know they're fighting in a championship and i'm just kind of popping in as like you get your guest guy having fun um i don't want to cause any problems for people um so it, it's going to be interesting and i want to try and strike a nice balance between you know being competitive but also not tripping up guys who are fighting for something so yeah i'm i'm optimistic i won't be near the back and on raw pace i can be somewhere near the middle and then in the race i think it's about making sure i survive those first few laps when everyone's really bunched up because obviously it's a grid start um looking at how the big kind of run into turn one you think there's plenty of opportunities for things to go a bit wrong i can survive that and then just kind of slowly lap and start to build and yeah, I'm I'm positive about it. I feel good with the car, which I think is half the battle. So if I can just kind of defend my my little patch of road and not cause any problems, I'll be I'll be quite happy. <laughs> Before we get started with qualifying, a quick message from Editing Simon at 2 in the morning. See, part of the outside line is a charity challenge associated with the Formula 1 PlayStation 1 projects he produces. Currently, the focus is on a charity called British Ukrainian Aid, helping out Ukrainian refugees. And if you'd like to support that, I put the link to the Just Giving page of said charity in the description below. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the pole position lap set by none other than Lorenzo Turi. All right, then let's have a quick look at Lorenzo Turi's pull up. I can already tell you he broke the official world record for this circuit in the F309 car into T1. Just barely used the brake pedal there. Fourth gear. Up into fifth now, you'll notice that this track almost doesn't really have any chicanes as you wouldn't have really needed them in the perception of 1970s Grand Prix racing. Still sixth gear. Just a slight lift. Down to third, still incredibly flowing. Now you might consider this a chicane, probably the slowest part of the track next to the final turn, fourth gear. 
Keeping it, keeping the foot down. Up into fifth once again, then down into third gear. Take a wide line to launch yourself onto the start. Finish straight with the Mistral. And again, the championship leader with an incredible performance. Almost no breaking there. Absolutely picture perfect lap. And the official world record, the unofficial world record, if you will, for Lorenzo Turi. And of course, with that world record setting time, he's going to be in pole position over two tenths ahead of championship rival Max Heyman. Dominic Kronsky with an incredible performance in third place. Greatest qualifying for him so far this season. Daniel Bentenreader in fourth. Gabriel Peckley in fifth place ahead of Philip Feckler. Alexander Hess on debut for SCMM in seventh place ahead of Ash Baker, who managed to qualify ahead of yours truly, which... Admittedly annoyed me quite a bit. <laughs> Victor B in 10th place ahead of Thomas Crabb for Streamline. He streamed this race. We're going to link to that in the description below. Aaron Curtis in 12th. Hugh Hamill in 13th. Adam Rosinko in 14th. Adrian Friedrich on his final outing starting in 15th ahead of Giovanni Philippe. And Lucas Hamilton starting right at the back of the field. He streamed the race as well. And now, your commentator for today, Aaron Smith. As we now sit here waiting for the lights to go green here in Johannesburg, it's lights out and away we go. It's a good start for a pole sitter, as to be expected. Lorenzo getting off to a fantastic start. Max Heyman just following in behind, as you can see in the background. We've already got some very intense battles going on. They might be going three, even four wide into turn one, but plenty of space around this track for overtaking and side-by-side -side action. Everyone getting through cleanly so far. For Lorenzo in the lead, a amazing start for our pole sitter. Daniel Benreader has moved himself up into second place. Good start from him, and there's a crash in the background. I can see there, and that's a huge incident. And oh my god, that was that was hella close. And that is Lucas Hamilton, I believe. But nevertheless, we continue with the battle up ahead. Max Heyman just going a little bit wide, allowing Gabriel Peckley to just gain a little bit of time on him. They're now going side by side. Uh, still on lap one, bear in mind, as they come around the final corner. Now onto the main straight. Not really a straight, but it's, it's, it's somewhat of a straight, as you can see Dominic Konsky in the background eyeing one up as he now makes it three wide. And again, it's lap one and these guys are going full send already. You love to see it. These guys giving absolutely nothing to error. Like these guys just send it. And that's the great thing about F3 as Gabriel Peckley sends it into turn one, but can't quite get the move done and just has to slot behind Max Heyman. This is all it's going to be the entire race. Just a massive slipstream game. And uh, so far, that's pretty much all we've seen, but... Not surprising, Lorenzo up in front making big progress as Gabriel tries to squeeze his way into a gap that wasn't really there and Max Heyman just about able to hold him off but a good start for Daniel Bentreader and of course our pole sitter Lorenzo who has shot off into the distance and Max uh, taking the better line through that corner that time and Gabriel suffering maybe in the dirty air just slightly putting himself off and now is under the attack of Dominic Kronsky behind is Dominic going to be able to do anything is Gabriel you can see weaving just trying to do anything he can to break the slipstream but it's basically pointless around here as you can see Dominic Kronsky has pulled alongside and is surely going to get the move done as we come across the line I think we might be going three wide into turn one. Nearly Dominic Konsky trying to go around the outside of uh, Gabriel Peckley, but can't quite get it done. The outside line is very, very dirty on this track. A lot of marbles out there and does really put you off. And Dominic Konsky just has to slot into fifth place. But Gabriel Peckley, he's he's not uh, off the cards yet. As uh, Oh, and I speak of the devil. Gabriel Peckley has thrown it away and that moves Dominic Kronsky and Philip Feckler and everyone else uh, behind him up a few places and Gabriel has now fallen to ninth place. Big mistake from Gabriel and it is a safety car. We are going to get a safety car on this. I believe it's the fourth lap. 
and everything just starting to settle down now is everyone just bunching each other up now and wow those, those are some very entertaining few laps um, it was actually fairly clean I'm uh, very very surprised uh, but uh, a few cars uh, having a little bit of damage of course uh, Gabriel Peckley very lucky oh and uh, I say that I think nope that's Gabriel's teammate that's uh, very awkward behind the safety car as he is now uh, J Tanny. <laughs> that was a very, very swift move by the number 32 right there. Uh, very, very awkward. Reminds me uh, sort of of uh, what happened in Mugello a couple years ago. But uh, nevertheless, we're going to see what happened to Aaron Curtis. Oh, they just go off into turn one and ouch. That's, yeah, that's why the safety car was. Was course not really much Aaron could do there as uh, yeah just had to avoid and eventually ended up in the wall but nevertheless we're going to resume racing here and hopefully we can get some even better action than we did in the opening few laps we're about to find out I hope you guys are ready I certainly am as Lorenzo is just picking his moment right trying to weave those tires get as much tempers in as in those tires as he can and that is a five second time penalty for Victor Bay, uh, who is currently occupying the last place, so shouldn't really affect the pecking order so far as that's Lorenzo bolting off into the distance. And so far has gotten a pretty good jump on Ben Reader behind. As Max Heyman trying to eye up and move on his teammate, but just doesn't really have the pace to do it. But don't count Dominic Kronsky out of this race. He is looking very feisty today and is all over the back of that Costec rear wing. And he is looking uh, fight, as, as feisty as he has all season, which of course you love to see. Uh, he's running a Arrows inspired livery. But now we look on to uh, Simon Kaur and the battles further behind. And uh, the grid sort of uh, being very jumbled up. Apart from uh, first place, the rest of the grid has been very much muddled up. And that's Dominic Crosby going ever so slightly wide. Gabriel Peckley trying to catch back up to the places that he lost. He is now in seventh place. And uh, this is with Philip Feckler, who has a head behind him. Uh, uh, this is about for fifth place. And Philip Feckler just tr trying to slip uh, back into the slipstream of Dominic Kronsky and try and defend the best he can. But speaking of Dominic Kronsky here, he goes on Max Heyman. He's pulling alongside that Arrows-inspired livery looking gorgeous as ever. Of course, the Costeg livery looking uh, gorgeous as well as they go into turn one. Max Heyman just about slots in front and Gabriel Peckley trying to go for a move and that's contact. That is contact with Philip Feckler who is round into turn one. And I... And we'll need a second look at that, but I... Ah, oh, that's a sticky one. Uh, we'll have to look at that again if we do get a replay. Quick insert from my end because Aaron wouldn't have seen it on his feed. Ash Baker right now is in 8th place and that would be an incredible result for him considering that he is essentially a sim racing rookie. But he would chuck away that 8th place in Sector 2 spinning at the tight left hander losing multiple positions dropping back quite a bit. And if you want to see how the rest of his race shapes out we highly recommend you check out his video on the Johannesburg race. It's going to be released a short while after our race highlights, so definitely check that out. We highly recommend it. But I'd also like to point out that Mr. Victor B is already back in 8th place after Baker spun. Therefore, it's going to be interesting to see how Victor is going to perform throughout the rest of the race because in terms of pace, he is absolutely on it right now. He's back in the points right behind yours truly and therefore let's hand it back to Mr. Aaron Smith for the rest of the race. Once again, we resume the battle for fourth, uh, excuse me, fifth place between Gabriel Perkley and Alexander Hess. That's a car looking very nice. On the onboard shot, as we go into turn one, there was a little bit of contact, and Alexander just moving ahead. And uh, maybe I was wrong a few laps ago about saying Gabriel had better pace. Uh, of course, commentators curse whenever I speak, the drivers do the exact opposite. 
Uh, it's, it's, it's a well-known phenomenon, in fact, but Gabriel Peckley now trying to come up back at Alexander Hess. But Alexander doing a very good job just to hold on for now, as that was Dominic Kronsky, who I thought had gone wide, and yeah, he did. He's now suffering. He's under pressure from Alexander Hess, who now moves himself up into fourth place. And Dominic Kronsky has to be careful here not to lose out to Gabriel Peckley either, and Dominic just needs to chill out, gain his composure again, and get in the slipstream of Alexander and hopefully re-overtake, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. He's got Gabriel on his back bottom, and Gabriel is going to have that double slipstream, which is the ultimate suck. The giga suck, as some people would say. Are we going to go three wide? Yes, of course we are. We're going to go three wide into turn one. Who's going to come out on top? You've got Dominic all the way on the right, Alexander on the left, Gabriel in the middle, and there's contact, and there's big contact, but they all managed to keep it on the track only just... And you, you'd think that there would be some contact into turn one, but somehow they all don't end up in the barriers. And Dominic overtaking Alexander, but losing out to Gabriel. Gabriel getting a double overtake there. The double slipstream working very well, but Dominic is now trying to come back at Gabriel. But just has to sit behind for now as we head into the middle part of the circuit. <coughs> Excuse me. Where there's not really many overtaking opportunities. And Gabriel can sort of chill out now. These curbs uh, in this middle part of the track are very, very high, and you do not want to touch them at all. Otherwise, you will be sent into no man's land, and you can wish your hopes and dreams goodbye. What is relevant, however, is that Dominic Kronsky, the number 34, is currently just edging ahead of Gabriel Peckley as we go into turn one. Is Gabriel going to try and be late on the brakes? Of course he is. But Dominic, very impressive. Move around the outside, but there's contact. And that's so unfortunate. And that's surely going to be a slam dunk penalty for Gabriel Peckley. Gabriel not really his corner in the end Dominic did just edge ahead and I'm going to have to put blame on Gabriel Peckley for that and that's really cost these two a good chunk of positions and Simon Kaur as I've said before he just manages to sneak his way up into the higher positions and although he may not have the greatest pace sometimes he is very clean and very respectable and is in fifth place sitting comfortably right now but another man who's sitting comfortably right now is this man in the lead lorenzo tori having an absolute dream of a race daniel benrida in second Heyman in third at the moment alexander hess in fourth place simon caught in fifth just talking about him amazing drive from him so far kronsky sixth gabriel seventh and that's somebody off in the smoke and who's that? That's a Costec car. And that is Daniel Benreader losing a rear wing. I saw some orange smoke and at first was thinking maybe a Max Verstappen fan had uh, maybe joined the server. But no, in fact, it was Daniel Benreader who has gone into the barriers somewhere and has lost his rear wing. And that is his race effectively over. And this is the thing with Daniel Benreader that we have said in the past in the AMC that he does just lack the consistency sometimes and is prone to mistakes. He does have a very, very good pace, but just needs to iron out those mistakes and he will be a fantastic driver. But now we go back to the battle for fourth place and that gives a place to everyone behind Daniel Benrina as Dominic Kronsky. This is now the battle for fourth place who was uh, doing a 360 a lap ago around the outside of Simon Core. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, Simon Kaur's car reminding me of a Cadbury chocolate bar. And uh, it is uh, looking very, very delicious. But uh, Dominic Kronsky's livery looking also very delicious as we have a safety car here with eight minutes to go. And you got to wonder, what are some drivers going to do now? Do some of these guys pit for fresh tyres? As this late in the race, it can have a massive effect on your car. And 
Yeah, some of the drivers have pit. You can see on your screens that uh, Lorenzo has pit, Gabriel pit. Pretty much everyone from fifth downwards has gone into the pit lane. And only the top four did not. Dominic Kronsky, Simon Court, Alexander Hess, and Max Heyman choosing to stay out on their old rubber as uh, we will wait and find out if that was the right decision. Uh, my predictions, I think it would have been the correct decision to pit, although maybe tire wear isn't as crucial around this track. But hey-ho, we are about to get going once again. With Max Heyman, your leader now, with Alexander Hess following in behind. And as we are about to go green, we just wait and see what Max Heyman is going to do. He's weaving that car left to right, just trying to warm those tires and get as much temperature in as he can. And he's backing up the pack very, very slowly right now. Kind of reminding me of Valtteri Bottas in Mugello. He goes and goes and goes and goes and blitzes and he's got a very good jump on the rest of the grid narrowing that slipstream down to a p into turn one and has got the restart basically nailed and that was a very good restart from the man in first uh, simon core now falling under pressure from the guys behind i'm not sure simon is going to be able to defend this for long but we will find out shortly enough. We've only got three minutes left in this race. But I can assure you we have got plenty of action left to come. As you can see, Lorenzo just going around the outside of Simon Core. Those fresh tyres paying dividends right now. And I would have predicted that because I'm a massive profit. And that's Max Heyman who has crashed into Gabriel Peckley and into Lorenzo Torre. Your big three favourites for this race have crashed into each other. I cannot believe my eyes. Alexander Hess is now leading. And Dominic Konski is in second place. Of course, Dominic, the three-time CIR world champion. Can he maybe get a win in the WMSC? I uh, botched that, but I'm too entertained by the... Uh, battling going on first places look at the speed that dominic can carry compared to alexander hess alexander's gonna want to fight this though surely as dominic has so much grip into turn one compared to everyone else and is in the lead of the race one absolutely turn of events as uh, lucas hamilton is in seventh place incredible result for him so far but this battle for the lead is not going to stop anytime soon we've got two minutes to go and this battle i know dominic i don't know uh, alexander that well but uh, these guys surely i mean it's for a lead of a race these guys are not going to give each other an inch is so close and uh, maybe if we were on another sim maybe contact there would have been slightly different but Automobilists are being fairly lenient with the contacts as Alexander messes up the final corner massively. And, uh, <clears throat> scratch that. I thought he went wide, but no, it was Dominic Kronsky who actually went wide. And now it's advantage Alexander Hess. And you've got Victor Bay now in second place who had a five second time penalty at the early stages of this race. And they're going to go three wide into turn one. Remember what happened the last time this happened? Well, I certainly do. And look at Dominic on the outside once again with that amazing outside line grip that he seems to have. Just slipping past these guys. <clears throat> and just look at the grip that he has. But so far has fallen back down a little bit. Couldn't quite make the advantage of that outside line. And Alexander Hess now slipping down to second place. I do not know who's going to win this race. Oh, wow, I need to take a breather for just a second. Uh, this race has had constant action, and my throat is absolutely shot. Don't know if you've been hearing throughout, but I have been coughing because, yeah, I'm worn out. You guys driving this must have been even more worn out than I am commentating. But uh, Dominic Konski coming around the final corner for the penultimate time, as I believe it's going to be white flag now. Dominic Konski... Uh, has he thrown the win away? Oh, we're going to find out as we've got one more lap to go in this race. 
as the leader, Victor, by just starting to edge out now as Dominic pulls alongside to try and get the slipstream of Alexander Hess and Hamill trying to get involved in the battle as well. Hamill taking that outside line, which is very grippy, but leaves you a bit vulnerable on the exit of the corner. And I can't quite make a move around the outside on Dominic Kronsky. And Victor by just starting to pull away from these guys as they start to battle. I mean, it's the last lap. Don't really think they could have caught him anyway. But nevertheless, Victor does have that time penalty. And unfortunately, it won't be enough as something has happened to Alexander Hess. He's uh, disappeared. Remember when I said last lap was white flag? No, because I forgot that Automobilista is weird and that when the timer hits zero on the lap that you're completing, then it's white flag. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I apologize, we have one more lap of racing to go. That is my fault. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, not, not been my day, has it? Uh, we still got one more lap to go. As, uh, that's car number 37. Uh, deciding that no aero is better. I mean, no drag, sure, but uh, you can't turn. As uh, evident right now, even on the straight, he can barely keep that car in a straight line. Whether that's because of suspension damage or the fact that, uh, well, he doesn't have a front or rear wing is yet to be known. But nevertheless, Dominic Kronsky is sitting comfortably in second place right now. Victor with that five second time penalty. Unless he can do something extraordinary on this last lap, we'll probably lose out and... Oh, he's looped it. He's looped it. Which has basically 100% confirmed that Dominic Kronsky is going to be your winner here in Johannesburg. To be fair, that gap was actually extending to about four and a half seconds. But Victor Bai threw away any chance he had of winning this race just then. And Dominic Kronsky comes across the line to win. The and Simon Kaur will be absolutely delighted to come home on the podium and will eventually move up into second place. Max Heyman is just missing out on the podium, unfortunately, even with that time penalty for Victor. Max Heyman could not get onto the podium, which is not good for his championship hopes. Yes, he did outscore Lorenzo, but unfortunately... It wasn't meant to be for Max Heyman and Dominic Konsky must be absolutely buzzing with enjoyment. And I am certainly, I hope you enjoy, you all enjoyed that race. It was an absolute stonker. And uh, I'll let the professional get back to it. And uh, I'll give you guys Simon back as uh, I bet you all miss him. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. We're heading to Adelaide for our next race. And I'll give you guys over to Simon Core. I hope you guys enjoyed. And well, I'll see you a lot next time. Well, thank you for the kind words, Aaron. Dominic Kronsky wins his first race in the ORSL and in the WMSC3 World Tour. Ahead of yours truly, uh, I have no idea how I ended up in second place, but Victor B still in third with that five-second penalty. Max Heyman in fourth, damage control for him possibly. Lucas Hamilton in fifth place, great result for the back row driver. Adam Rosinko in sixth place. Adrian Friedrich somehow ends up in seventh place on his final outing for C2F Racing. Giovanni Philippe, despite losing his front and rear wing, ending up in 8th place. Neil Point for Hugh Hamill as well as Ash Baker. Again, Alexander Hess with a disconnect. Gabriel Packley and Lorenzo Turi had to retire after that collision with Max Heyman. Daniel Bentenreader had to retire as well, which is why the safety car was deployed. Philip Feckler, Thomas Crabb, and Aaron Curtis had to retire as well. So then, four down, two to go. Lorenzo Turi leads the Drivers' Championship with nine points behind him. Both Bentenreader and Heyman on 21 points. Now I'm suddenly in fourth place. Gabriel Packley in fifth. Dominic Kronsky suddenly in sixth place. And it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the Costec boys are going to react to this, seeing as they might have possibly lost a big shot today at gaining loads of points on Lorenzo Turi. Then again, if it hadn't been for the safety car caused by Daniel Benton Reader, neither Turi nor Heyman would have been in the position that they were in at the end of the race. So we'll see how things are going to continue at 
Adelaide. But in the team's championship, Kostak is now firmly ahead of Mistral with a gap of 14 points. Bravo Snowshot in eSports in third ahead of C2F Racing. And again, Hlapak in fifth place ahead of Back Realm Motorsports with 10 points as well at this stage. And again, next time out, we're going to go to Adelaide. And we're going to have a few surprises for you for the fifth round of the WMSC3 World Tour. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the Outside Lines video on this race from his perspective. And until next time, keep racing.